Hi guys, welcome to episode 5, Dogman Murders. The most popular werewolf murder to date, and of course, all of the DNR, FBI, law offices, etc. deny any such creature caused this. But we all know better than that. The Land Between the Lakes Werewolf Murder A long, long time ago, a family of four was camping at the campground in an RV. From what I've been told, something was messing around the camper and had got to the family's camper and had started making noises and got the family's attention. So the father grabbed his gun and opened the door to step out. And as soon as he stepped out, he was confronted by the creature. He may or may not have got a shot off. I'm not sure, but the creature apparently grabbed him right in front of the RV door, causing the door to remain open. And the dad was trying to fight the beast off and the mother and child hiding in the bathroom. The mother, not realizing the door had been left open, stayed in the bathroom waiting for her husband to tell her to come out. Only the footsteps she heard wasn't her husband's. The creature got to her in the bathroom and slaughtered her. Blood everywhere. Tore her to pieces. Apparently, the little girl got away and ran, but unfortunately, she did not make it far. The creature got her. The police were on scene the next day and found the man and woman ripped to shreds. They didn't realize about the kids until they noticed in the suitcases children's clothes were packed. And they seen little girl's clothes in and around the campsite. So they searched the area. About 60 feet from the RV, they found her. Well, what was left of her? She was up in a tree about 25 feet high. Her feet and fingers were eaten. One leg and one arm was gone. She had her clothes ripped off and dangling in the tree limbs. Her back and stomach had been eaten also. She had one sock on. Everyone tells me that there were two children. One person told me it was a boy who was killed in the RV right after his father ripped to shreds on a bed, but I have not found any other evidence of that. But I do know a dog man was responsible for the murders of the campers at the Land Between the Lakes, also known as the LBL Monster. The bow hunter killed at the land between the lakes. A bow hunter's campsite was found torn to shreds when a sheriff went to check on him after he did not return home to go to work. So his wife called and had the sheriff go because she knew something was wrong. The sheriff found his truck and realized his windows had been busted out and the seats were shredded as if a bear got locked in. His campsite was destroyed. His tent was shredded. Everything was destroyed as if a bomb had went off. It appeared there had been a struggle. The sheriff knew how to read prints and track animals and could tell there had been a struggle of some sort, so he followed the path grass messed up, and so on. He came into this field where he found the body of the hunter, devoured and mutilated so bad he thought a bear had got him. The Department, and North, the Department of Natural Resources and Wildlife and the FBI showed up, and the local police knew something was up. However, the sheriff who was there first, did take photos and hair samples left around the area and a cast of footprints and blood samples. The blood was the dead man and he mixed with canine blood, so the sheriff ruled out a bear. But he found a four-inch black claw had one of his buddies at the lab look at the hair and claw 
they extracted DNA from the claw and hair. Results came back. For the claw, it was an unidentified animal. The hair test was also an unidentified canine animal. The blood, however, had some unique DNA patterns, unknown origins. But there were similarities between human DNA, ape DNA, and canine DNA. But was ruled, as I guess you could say, tainted. As in contaminated DNA and was destroyed. Yeah, they knew what they had. Werewolf DNA. The sheriff knew what had killed that man. But he had orders on what to say to the wife. But there was witnesses to the murder before the sheriff got there. And I found them. A werewolf killed that man and they seen it. They wanted to help, but it was too late. The saddest thing, the man had hunted there every year and only had a bow with him. So you and I both know he didn't have a chance in hell. The bad thing is his wife will never know the truth, and I really hate that. The man was killed by a werewolf, or a dog man, as you would say. I mean, come on, can't we acknowledge his killer? Dog man murders man's entire family. One night, a family had finally had enough of a creature beating on the house and keeping them up all night howling. So the father sat out into the woods to find the beast that was torturing his family. He had reached the top of the ridge and was looking into the area trying to find any sign of the beast. Then he heard screams coming from his home, screams and howling. He raced back down the mountain trying to get there as fast as his body would get him there. He was a quarter mile from the home when everything went silent. He stopped and he could see the house. A creature came out. He fired upon the creature. It ran into the woods. He hurried to the house not knowing what he would find. He opened the door slowly to find his wife in the kitchen on the floor with blood all around her. She was dead. He began to cry over her body and he remembered the children. He got up to go find the children. One was in the living room torn to pieces. He headed to the other rooms where he found their nine month old baby half eaten. He lost it. He broke down. And out of the corner of his eyes, he seen movement. He grabbed his gun and pointed it. Daddy, it's me. Daddy, it's me. Don't shoot. Oh, Jesus. Honey, are you okay? No. It killed them. It killed them, Daddy. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do at all. I know, baby. I hid in the truck. It didn't see me. Good, sweetie. I'm glad. I need you more than ever now, girl. As the years passed, the father never left the home in the hopes the creature would return and he would kill it. The creature never returned, and the old man died waiting for his revenge. The old lady in her home. There was an elderly lady in her 60s who lived alone. She had dogs of her own and people did check up on her. Late one night, her Doberman needed to go out and use the restroom. So she unlocked the door and unlocked the doggy door and let him out. She always left the doggy door unlocked while her dog was out. She was sitting in her chair drinking tea when she heard her dog come back in. She got up and went and locked the doggy door as she did every night. She called for her dog and she heard him come up behind her and she turned around to pet him 
and it wasn't her dog. It was a monster. It was a six foot dog man in this woman's home face to face with her. She screamed and ran and of course it chased her. She gave it all she had throwing everything at it. Dishes, knives, lamps, everything. Her dog came in and attacked the beast giving his master time to escape. The woman ran to her door and tried to open it and for some reason she couldn't. Realizing she didn't lock the doggy door, she locked the main door. So she ran to her bathroom and locked the door. She called her neighbor and they were on their way. She called the police. They laughed at her and said, Yeah, okay, call when you have a real emergency. Aggravated, she hung up the phone and bam, the dog man was at the door trying to get in. It almost got in and she heard the horn blowing. The dog man stopped. She heard it run down the hall. Heard it trying to tear the door down. Don't get out of the car, she prayed. Mom! Mom! She could hear her son yelling. Get back in the car! It's a dog man! Go back! Go back! She yelled and screamed. She heard it still in the house trying to get out the door. Then all was silent. Oh no! It's going through the doggy door. Her dog was not barking. She slowly opened the door and ran into her room and grabbed the shotgun and her four, her forty-five. And she heard her son screaming. The guns were loaded. She ran out the door and there it was on top of her son, eating and slashing him alive. She shot the creature in the head with a shotgun. When it spun around, she shot it in the face with a forty-five. <laughs> to her surprise, it screamed and ran off. It didn't kill it. Oh, my God, she said. Son, get up. Get up, son. She ran in, got the phone, called 911, and told them someone was dying. Come quick. Her son was barely alive when they got there. They asked him what happened, and all he could say was dog man, dog man. It was the dog man that got me. They took the old lady's statement. She told them the entire story, and of course FBI shows up. So she told them. They believed her, and even told her not to tell a soul or there would be trouble and she thought that was odd okay she said to the agents DNR showed up and stayed weeks on her land watching for it but they never gave her any information on what it was it was like they were secretive about it and that they knew what it was but we all know DNR do not come and stake your land out unless there is actually a problem. We know, and they know we know, what this thing is. The old lady's son died two days later from internal organ damage and bleeding and infection. How do you tell people your son was killed by a werewolf? And she blames herself. If she hadn't have called him, she feels he would still be alive. But it's not her fault. Her son died protecting his mother, as any child would do. But the mother feels she should not have called him. And I'm sure if he had it to do over again, he would do it again. You won't find the story in the newspapers or police reports. She had even created a page for him explaining the truth, and somehow it was removed. So she uploaded again, 
and someone removed it. She fears she's being watched. The kids playing on a construction site in California. Two brothers were playing in California on a construction site, making videos and doing documentaries. It was near their home. One brother was nine and the other was 13. The nine-year-old found odd tracks and decided to follow them. The other brother was ready to go and said, I'm leaving. So he did. The nine-year-old said, I will catch up with you. The 13-year-old returned home and his father asked, where is your brother? He said he would catch up with me. Hell no. Watch your brother. Let's go get him. The father and son returned to the country site. I'm sorry. Returned to the construction site and he was nowhere to be found. They yelled and yelled. Nothing at all. Yelled and yelled again. Nothing again. So they followed the tracks the young boy had followed. After about 10 minutes of walking, they came up on his dead, lifeless body. Badly ripped to shreds, half eaten, and gashes across his face, neck, and chest. His legs and arms had been eaten off, and they had noticed the same footprints that they were following was now all around the dead child's body, covered in blood. Bloody footprints everywhere. The father picked up his child and screamed. The other son ran back to the house and called 911. The father knew what had done this, but again, police rolled it as stray dogs. But the father knew better. Also, the kid had a camera. The parents did not give it to the police. The father seen what had killed his child, and now he is a werewolf hunter, looking for the one who killed his boy. Unfortunately, about 10 years after his boy's death, the father, I believe, suffered the same death. Of course, a pack of wild dogs, again, was ruled out. His eldest soon shared this with me and wishes to remain anonymous. So for the respect of my client, I do not and will not tell anyone my source. What I've learned from all of this, anytime people are killed by stray dogs and no one sees the stray animals and all the clothes are torn off, and if there's no dog ever convicted or a owner of a dog isn't convicted, 8 out of 10 times, it's not wild dogs. It's a dog man. Indian Reservations A lot of freak accidental death involving stray dogs happen on Indian Reservations, I've noticed. Many have lost their lives to these beasts. The elder ones call them the night dog predators, claiming they come out at night and get anyone who's out and alone and not paying attention. People, more than likely, that are drunk, high, young, or even paralyzed in a way that makes an easy meal. Even kids fetching wood. Native Americans do not like to speak of them. They believe speaking of them brings them close. Many women and children have disappeared, missing forever, and others found eaten and slaughtered in trees near the village. One little girl was sledding and disappeared and found later eaten and clothes were found shredded so well. So whatever is eating them does not like the taste of clothes. Others found dead is drunk women and men. Again, all blamed on wild dogs. And there's never any witnesses that ever sees or hears anything. We don't know if they're scared to come forward and tell. Scared that they may be next 
if they speak of such a creature. But we do know that these night dogs, which is also mentioned in Christopher's account on Vic Cundant's interview, are predators who likes to prey on the weak. So we know that for a fact. And Indian reservations seem to be the hot spot for that particular incident. Taken from the yard. My most unique story comes from a few families that have had their children stolen out of their yard. A little girl was playing in her sandbox at the back of her yard and her mother went in to use the bathroom. No more than five minutes later, the mother returned and the little girl was gone. The mother looked and screamed and looked and called 911. They came and the mother had been looking the entire time until 911 got there at her home. They searched and they searched. 75 feet from the house in the tall grass, they found the little girl eaten from toe to torso. It was horrible. Again, blamed on a pack of dogs nowhere to be found. Although, although the mother did not agree, she would have heard dogs barking, but she didn't. And the backyard was fenced in, so how, how did she get out? How did the dogs get to her? Clothes gone? How would dogs take clothes off of a child? And of course, DNA from a canine. Hair of an unknown creature. But still, the police say wild dogs. I think a dog man got her. And was watching her from the right moment. Maybe the dog man jumped the fence and grabbed her and ran. But one thing's for certain. We'll never know the truth. <clears throat> this next story is the Texas campsite murder. Six people were murdered at a campsite in Texas. Four men, one woman, and her two-year-old child. The campsite was ripped to shreds, blood everywhere, Everyone was ripped to pieces as if the Wolverine from X-Men sliced them up. They were also dismembered. No signs of being tied up or held at gunpoint. The prints around the site suggested everyone put up a fight. The child was half eaten. The mother's throat was sliced open. And four grown men were sliced and diced. They found no human prints around the site, no hair from a human, but they did find hair on the victims, but because many people had seen the crime scene and labeled it as a homicide, and they have caught a man who they say done it because his footprints were there at the crime scene, of course they were. I found them and ran around seeing if anyone was alive, he said. So he went to court for the murder of six people, four men not tied up, had guns, and there were shells found at the scene, meaning these guns were fired. So how did this man do this? He didn't. This is a government cover-up because they can't blame it on nothing else. Please know it was a dog man. A dog man killed these people. This man found these people, ran around to check and make sure all of them had a pulse and none of them did. When He even called the police. And when the police arrived, they put him in handcuffs and said that he done it. And he, apparently, according to them, he even ate the baby. But his stomach was checked. There was no human DNA or human blood in his stomach, but because it was something that was unexplained, he is now in jail for the murder of these men. 
Now you tell me how a man murders four grown men, slices a woman's throat, and rips her to pieces, and eats a child. There's no way. And how does he slice a tent with wolverine? Marks. No weapon was ever found. Nor does his teeth match the teeth mark. The canine DNA was found, not human DNA. The government is covering this up. They know what did this. You can find this in the papers, and you will find the picture of the person they blame it on. I totally do not agree with this. This makes me the angriest. They're blaming people for dog man murders now. Moving on, before I get very angry. Close Encounters, Thomasville, North Carolina. A mother and child were home alone and heard a loud bang. The son noticed the door was being ripped off, so he ran to the door and listened. The screen door finally came off, then the door began to shake wildly as if an earthquake or a train was about to run through. Mom, help! Mom, help! She came, seen what was going on. Help me! We held the door, and the force was crazy. It was growling and howling. It sounded like a werewolf. My mom ran to get the pistol. Hurry, hurry, it's getting in. It hit again, and it hit again, and it hit again, and the last time it hit, it got its hand in. Only thing I could do was stand there against the door, and I said, oh my God. It was a human hand with four to five inch claws black claws it looked like it had been digging in dirt get the gun hurry she came back and it stopped it seemed to know when i said get the gun what a gun was i never will forget that it still scares me to this day we never had any problems again but it tried to force its way into our home. And we weren't even doing anything. It ripped our screen door off its hinges. It opened our screen door and ripped it off. And it almost got in to our home. Had I not had been quick enough to stand and hold the door, it would have busted right through the door if my mom had not got the gun when she did it would have got in the house because it got its hand in and i will never forget that hand it looked like a werewolf hand three of the middle fingers were a lot longer than the other two it was crazy I did peek out on the front porch when it stopped. It was a werewolf. I seen its face. The porch light was on. I didn't tell my mom, but we moved the next day. I lived in Thomasville, North Carolina. Now I live in an apartment behind a gated community with a lot of lights and security guard. Well, I hate to tell you this, hon, but... Werewolves are known for jumping fences. And if they want in your house, they'll get in your house. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to read a letter from a fan that I got. <sighs> okay, it says, Hi Amanda, I'm just curious if there are dog, dog men in the cities. I cannot disclose my location, but have you ever heard of someone seeing one of these dog men in the city am i safe katie well katie i hate to tell you but unfortunately dog men have come into the cities now as far as you and your gated community i assure you 
It would help, but a dog man can jump over fences all the time. As far as the lights, that's probably your safe haven right there. I understand these creatures have scared you to death, and I respect that. But yes, they are in the cities. Not every city, but some. Thanks, Katie, for that email. And as always, thanks for listening to the show. You guys make the show successful. Without you all, I wouldn't be here. All right. Next up, we have Scott from Tennessee. He writes, Dear Amanda, I was wondering if you know of anyone who has actually shot and killed a dog man. I've heard a lot of people shoot them, but none die. Well, Scott, I have not witnessed it myself personally, but I have heard of it. On Vic Cundiff's show, Dog Man Encounters, there was a boy with two uncles, and apparently there were they are werewolf hunters, I reckon. And they had a problem with one coming up to their home. So they set bear traps at every window and they got it. It screamed like nothing they had ever heard. The uncles put the child in the bathroom and went outside and put about a hundred rounds each into this thing. It was dead. The entire body was pulverized like hamburger meat and the uncles gathered the boy and the boy who is now a man said that he got to check it out however instead of turning the body over to the authorities they decided to cut the head off and place it on a stick and tear the limbs off and place them all around the edge of town this was their theory on how to keep the others from coming into town. Needless to say, it did work, as far as I know. So I have heard of one being killed, but I've never seen it with my own eyes. So they did kill this dog man, and from what the boy said, the dog man's entire body looked like hamburger meat when his uncles got done with it, except for the head, because they didn't want to mess the head up, which is understandable, and the boy got to examine it, which was really cool. So, I guess that's all we have for tonight, and I would like to thank you guys for tuning in this week. I know I promised you guys we would talk about the Missing 411 book. But unfortunately we are out of time. So next week the entire show will be about the book M Missing 411. Also I wanted to let you guys know that I am trying to start up a radio show about dog men. So it's in the works. Also I am designing Dog Man Stories t-shirts and long sleeve shirts and hoodies so if you're interested please send me an email or a text or give me a call you can email me at dogmanstories at gmail.com the cost per t-shirt is 12 bucks long sleeves are 15 and hoodies are 25 this is a non-profit price we are just using this for the upkeep of the radio station and the show. And we can show the world we believe in Dog Man. So, guys, until next week, be good, be safe, and I will be back. Also, guys, before I go, I want to tell you guys of a contest right quick. For all my friends and fans, there is a contest I'm going to have for you all. On episode 10... I will announce the winner of this contest. Now for the contest rules, you must be subscribed to my channel and you must have liked every episode from episode 1 to 9. And by doing so, just comment below the video, liked, that way I know who liked it. And you must purchase a t-shirt a long sleeve shirt or a hoodie 
Now, I will have this every 10 episodes, but you only have to purchase a t-shirt, hoodie, or a long sleeve shirt one time. You don't have to purchase it every time. Just one time, and you'll be eligible for the contest that I'll be doing on every 10th episode. All right, and let's see, you must have purchased the t-shirt, and when you reach the guidelines, you will be eligible to win a $50 Visa gift card. So, yes, you do have to buy a shirt, but you're still getting more money, so everything works out for the better. Every 10 shows, there will be another drawing for a $50 gift card. You only have to purchase a shirt one time to be eligible. You do not have to buy one for every drawing. So good luck, everyone. You do have to like every episode from 1 to 20, 20 to 30, so on and so forth. So, guys, I hope you enjoy the shows, and if any of you want to share your story or get in touch with me, feel free to call me at 336-781-3040 or email me at dogmanstories at gmail.com. Also, check out our Facebook page, Dogman Stories Community. Or my Facebook page, Amanda Lawson. And again, the Dogman Stories phone line is 336-718-3040 or 336-781-3040. And the email address is dogmanstories at gmail.com. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next week.